Welcome back to History in Motion, proudly brought to you by Midas. Before the break, I asked you a quick question. How many parts does the average car have? The answer is 30,000 parts when counting every part down to the smallest screw. Quite a bit, eh? The Investcam Formula Fords were next up on the track, and last minute shining and polishing was happening with some careful attention to detail, while others were checking the pedals and other possible problem areas. This is quite tricky today. Uh, we've got quite a lot of wind, uh, which is moving the car around quite a bit. Uh, and it comes in gusts, so you don't know what's going to happen next. So every corner is a different adventure. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, uh, Andrew's quite close behind me and Graham will be, will be there. So, yeah, we'll just give it a good go and see what happens at the end of eight laps. OK, the best place for overtaking uh, at this Paquita track is down the long back straight. If you pick up a good tow from somebody, that, that can really work. And also uh, getting a good run out of the last turn onto the pit straight here and then getting up the inside of them into turn one. Gives them nowhere to go. Not as expected. We were hoping to be a little bit quicker than we were. We got third on the grid, but uh, we'll do a little bit of work and see what we can do. Ian's, Ian's really quick at the moment. He's, uh, he's on pole and Andrew on second. So, um, yeah, we've got a bit of work to do. It's a nice flowing track, some fast sweeps and uh, some nice tight turns. So, uh, yeah, it's one of, one of the better tracks, I would say, yeah. My favourite spot for overtaking must be down the back straight, where uh, if you get a good enough tow, you can drive around the outside of them. Ian Schofield will line up in pole position with championship leader Andrew Horn alongside him. Graham Hepburn and Alan Mayer take up their positions on row two, with positions from third through to eighth on the grid separated by just six tenths of a second in qualifying. The stage is set for some close racing in the Invest Chem Formula Fords. The lights go out and racing begins. Graham Hepburn gets a good start and is looking for a wave between the front row. Into turn one, and Ian Schofield stays ahead of Andrew Horn, and Hepburn follows him round. Schofield and Hepburn carry a lot of speed through to turn two and put a bit of tarmac between themselves and Horn. Monte Stradom having a good start, and he's challenging Alan Mayer for fourth position as the field stream through turn three. Stradle makes it work, and Dean Fenter's coming under some pressure from Dylan Holton and Paul Schultz. The Formula Fords are very tightly bunched together with lots of jostling for positions. There's barely a second separating the lead cars as they come into the boot. Paul Schultz is having a look down the inside of Dylan Holton as they run side by side through the boot. Holton keeps the power down and holds his position for now. Down the back straight, Hepburn pulls out and has a look down the inside of Schofield. Schofield, carrying some more speed, stays ahead and leads Hepburn through the right-handers. Hepburn is right in his gearbox, though, and as they come into heels Corp, he has another look. Hepburn on the inside, Schofield on the outside, side by side through the corner, and Hepburn comes out in the lead. Horn takes advantage of Hepburn's move, and while Schofield is focused on him, Horn sneaks up as well and challenges Schofield as they run through turn 11 and onto the main straight. Schofield manages to stay ahead of Horn, and David Jeremy moves up alongside Horn and challenges for third place. He gets ahead of Horn and chases down Schofield as they power down the straight. Into turn one, Jeremy has the inside line, and he makes the pass on Schofield and moves into second place. Hepburn has managed to pull a bit of a gap on Jeremy and Schofield. Andrew Horn is pushing hard and he's looking for a way past Schofield, but it looks like Schofield has got it covered as they go through turn three. Down the long back straight, David Jeremy has picked his moment and moves out of the slipstream and challenges Hepburn for the lead. Hepburn right in his gearbox won't let the Van Diemen get away as they make their way through turn nine. It looks like Hepburn has managed to regain the lead as they come through Heels Corp. Through turn one, and Andrew Schofield has Stuart Thompson spinning in front of him and off into the gravel. Now that would get your blood pumping. David Jeremy pushing hard in second place with Ian Schofield breathing down his neck. Jeremy gets it slightly wrong on the exit and goes farming in the gravel, allowing Schofield to cruise past unhindered on the track. Andrew Horn has also got past Jeremy as the field race into the boot. Alan Mayer and Dean Fenter are side by side. Mayer edging ahead of Fenter as they head to Castle Corner. Fenter a little bit squiggly. Down the back straight, the cars are slipstreaming each other in order to keep up their speed and avoid the strong headwind. Monte Stratum pulls out and has a look down the inside of Fenter, but he isn't close enough as they go through turn nine. Dean Fenter in his blue Swift, meanwhile, is trying to find a way past the orange number 15 Van Diemen of Alan Mayer. 
David Jeremy trying to make up some of the ground he lost on his earlier excursion. On the main straight, Mayer and Fenter pushing hard, run slightly wide and kick up a dust cloud behind them. The Suburban Body Shop Ray leads the Invest Chem Miguel and the Zena Chemicals Royale through Turn 1. In the battle for the lead, Schofield is putting the pressure on Hepburn. He moves alongside him and into the lead. Great move there, and Hepburn is left to chase. Hepburn will also be coming under some pressure from Andrew Horn, who will be looking for any opportunity to make his move. In the battle for fourth place, the racing is very close and David Jeremy is having a look down the inside of Alan Mayer as they come into turn one. The pair run side by side and Dean Fenter behind them is watching with keen interest. Through turn one, Jeremy passes Mayer and now Fenter has a look. He can't make it work just yet. Matej Stratum is right behind Fenter and he's looking for any way past. Stratum goes out wide and Schultz comes past on the right and moves ahead of the Sage Talon. Through the boot and onto Castle Corner, they run nose to tail. Jeremy, Mayer, Fenter, Schultz and Stratum run in a train through to turn six. Coming through the Uncinis and Schofield spins in front of Hepburn. Hepburn has nowhere to go and can't avoid contact with Schofield. That's a major damage to the Ray. Graham Hepburn seems okay as he gets out of the car. Ian Schofield gets his car going again and he will limp it around to the pits. I'm not sure he knows what caused the spin. Andrew Horn was right behind the pair and he watched the whole incident unfold. Luckily he was able to take evasive action and avoid any contact. Graham Hepburn just didn't have time to react to the situation as Schofield's car rolled back onto the track and the front of his car bore the brunt of the impact. Schofield happily racing along and turns into the right-hander and then he's a passenger as his car spins around and finds Hepburn. A very unhappy Graham Hepburn tries to kick his damaged car back into shape. Ian Schofield pulls his car into the pits and retires from race one. The battle for the lead now involves at least five cars. David Jeremy leads at the moment, but it is a close run thing. Dean Fenton and Alan Mayer are side by side with Paul Schultz right up there. Matej Stratum and Andrew Horn are right behind them. Stratum right in the gearbox of Schultz, looking right, swinging back across and looking left. Alan Mayer just beside him. Stratum really is looking for any way past, but he can't find one just yet. Behind him, Horn is also pushing hard and trying to find a way past. Things are very interesting. Stratum has been working hard and he pulls alongside Alan Mayer and manages to make the pass. Andrew Horn is not going to hang around. He will want to make up the ground he lost when avoiding the Hepburn Schofield collision. He moves alongside Mayer and makes the pass through the Oncinis. Dalen Holton is now on Mayer's gearbox. Down the back straight and Dean Fenter is piling the pressure onto Paul Schultz. As they approach turn nine, Fenter has the inside line and it's almost three abreast as Stratum joins the pair. Schultz stays ahead of Fenter as they enter the series of right-handers. Horn is closing in on Stratum. Through Hill's Corp, it's Jeremy, Schultz and Fenter with Horn right on Stratum's tailpipe. Nose to tail, they follow each other through the final bend and onto the main straight. The Invest Game Formula Fords are giving us a great race. Fenter is trying everything he can, and he moves alongside Schultz and sets himself up on the inside line for turn one. Through the corner, they run wheel to wheel. As they exit, Fenter has managed to make it work and moves into second place ahead of Schultz. Matej Stratum has kept his eyes open and is ready to make his move on Schultz as well. Paul Schultz now drops back to fourth. Dalen Holton is pushing hard and he's looking for a way past Andrew Horn and Paul Schultz as well. Andrew Horn in his effort to pass Schultz runs wide into the dirt, kicks up some dust but amazingly makes it past. Interesting move. Holton champing at the bit will be eager to pass Schultz as well and he has a look down the inside of the Miguel but can't do anything just yet. David Jeremy has managed to pull a slight gap at the front but the battle for second is still very close with five cars vying for the position. Fenter leads the train of Stratum. Horn, Schultz and Holton onto the back straight. Stratum tucked in behind Fenter, ventures left and has a look down the outside. 
on the approach to turn nine and straight on this move to head of Fenter, but there will be a fight back from the turn fab engineering swift. Fenter keeps the pressure on, but he can't find a way past the Sage Talon. Andrew Horn will doubtless be glued to Fenter's tailpipe as well, so pressure all round in this battle at the front of the field. Into the final bend, and Holt and challenges Schultz again, but the result is the same, and Schultz stays ahead. Holton must be racking his brain, trying to think of a way to get past the Miguel in front of him. Into turn one, and Fenter tries a late move down the inside of Stratum. Stratum holds his line, and Fenter has to fall back. Stratum having a good look at the gearbox of David Jeremy, taking it in from all angles, trying to see a way past the Van Diemen. Jeremy will be making sure he defends his line and stays ahead of the Talon. Fenter has joined the lead pair, and the Swift is also piling the pressure on Jeremy. Jeremy is being attacked from all angles, and Stratum is also going to have to defend his line. Horn has snuck up behind Fenter, and is now having a look on the inside, as they go through the boot, and he moves ahead of Fenter for now. Oh, Steve Fenter's had a bit of an excursion, but after some help from the Marshals, has managed to get himself going again. Coming through the last few corners of the race, and it's still David Jeremy who leads the pack. Behind him, Matej Stratum leads Dean Fenter, who repassed Andrew Horn, who is now in fourth place. The top nine cars are separated by less than three seconds, and how they cross the line is anyone's guess, as the last-minute challenges are made. Round the final corner and onto the main straight, where the checkered flag will be waiting. David Jeremy takes the victory, and he is clearly very happy about that. Victory by just under two tenths of a second for David Jeremy over Matej Stratom. Dean Fenter and Andrew Horn separated by three tenths of a second. Under two tenths of a second separated Paul Schultz and Dalen Holton. Jonathan Nash and Alan Mayer crossing the line less than two tenths of a second apart. No, it didn't end the way we wanted to do it to race, uh, end at all. Uh, got, a, got, a, got a reasonable start and then uh, got passed by Graham and David on the first lap, or the end of the first lap, and then uh, worked my way back up into the lead. Uh, sort of everything was feeling quite good, uh, car was good, and uh, coming into the sweep onto the back straight, I changed down to third, I turned in and the gear just popped out. Immediately then I was an absolute passenger in the car and I spun and Graham had nowhere to go and unfortunately it hit me. We got away, I started third and I got in behind Ian on the start, I uh, went around the outside of Andrew on turn one, so that was a bit, of, uh, a bit of racing to start with, getting the blood going and stuff, and then I chased Ian and I managed to get past him. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, it was uh, a couple of issues with the gears and stuff. And then it started settling down into a three-way race with Andrew right behind me, Ian in front of me. And, uh, yeah, racing incident. And uh, unfortunately, that's where we are. Unfortunately, there's two corners off. A um, little bit of bodywork damage, but um, nothing we won't get repaired before the, for the next race. I think we've got all the bits we need to fix it. The, the lads are busy working on it now. So hopefully we'll get out and start from the back of race two and see if we can fight our way through. Uh, yeah, we were in a nice three-way battle for the lead, Ian and Graham and myself. Uh, unfortunately, Ian had a big spin coming onto the back straight, and Graham just couldn't miss it. I went miles off into the bushes to miss it, and by the time I got back on, everyone was past me. So, bit of a bit of a hack back from there, really. I started fifth, got into fourth straight away, and then I got past uh, Andrew and Graham, chased down Ian, got past Ian, and then took it off myself which didn't help, and uh, from my divisor half open, which didn't help, and I couldn't see a thing. Got back on the fourth, and I got a, got a bit of help by Graham and Ian, and then um, just got past Andrew, and then sort of carried it home. Um, a lot of cars swapping uh, positions. Um, great racing, actually. Um, very exciting, uh, four cars going together into the same corner. Yeah, it was just fantastic racing. Uh, everybody used their heads and uh, no incidents from that point of view. Close calls though, here and there, but uh, not as bad as uh, Ian and, uh, and uh, Graham. So, yeah, I think we got lucky. <laughs> well, that was Formula Ford racing at its best. I mean, absolutely fantastic. I think it could have been anybody's race. At one stage, I was up there in second place as well, hoping for the win, but um, so tight. I mean, there was hardly any place for the wheels. But everybody, as Matej said, everybody was very sensible and kept it together. But absolutely fantastic, great stuff. After a very busy week, taking the engine out twice, I'm quite happy with my race, how it went. And um, a big thank you to DAW for the power. We'll be back with more thrilling action from the Invest Chem Formula Fords after the break.